Hi guys, um, so today I'm going to be installing Windows. I've already installed Windows 98, second edition on this hard drive. Um, but now I'm going to be installing Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 onto this hard drive. And the way I'm going to do it, so I have a proper bootloader and everything, is because I've already installed this one here, Windows 98 on this one. This is going to be my master drive, because I'm using IDE, it's going to be my master hard drive. And I'm going to install Windows XP after it onto this hard drive here, which is going to be the slave. And I'm doing that because the two operating systems run, they work different. Windows 98 is DOS based and Windows XP is NT based and they use different bootloaders and everything. So the way around, say if I install Windows 98 after XP, chances are it'll, it would mess up the XP installation or wouldn't even show it up or anything because it's a NTFS drive and this one's FAT32. So a way around it to make sure it's going to work properly is I've reinstalled 98 first and then after that I'm going to be installing XP. And what's going to happen is, because I'm going to have this drive already connected, when I start installing to this drive, the installer will see that there's already another operating system on the master drive, so it's going to add it automatically, or hopefully automatically, to the bootloader. So when it's done, when I turn it up, when I turn on the computer, it'll give me a option of either Windows XP or Windows 98. So I can do a proper dual boot. And the reason why I'm using Windows 98 and XP is because 98's MS-DOS based so it has a bigger compatibility with older games whereas Windows XP because it's NT based will have a bigger compatibility with newer games and I can make better use of the hardware then being a Pentium 4 machine. So I'm going to pop this hard drive in, I'm going to screw it in, I might leave this one out for now, I don't know. but. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so here we are in the setup. Um, as you can see here, this partition here, that's my Windows 8 one, I just named the hard drive. I labeled the hard drive in Windows before I started the installer, just so I wouldn't mess it up. But both my drives are different sizes completely. The Windows 98 drive is 20 gigs, and the one you'll be using for Windows XP is 40. So if you've never installed Windows XP before, it's pretty easy. Just go here and then you can either just go enter and install, it should make a partition for us. But just for demonstration's sake, I'll just go C, create partition, automatically makes it the whole disk, press enter. And now it's made of all partitions, so we'll just go enter again. Now we can either format the format it with NTFS a full format so I think that just does a zero wipe where it writes over the disk and then and then uh, formats it again so you can install it that's just to get rid of any data on it but I always just go quick no need to worry about doing a f uh, full format unless the drive's got problems or you're running into issues with it See, now it's formatted this is their checking drive C and D. So now it's check drive C. So it's just working out what OS it is. And hopefully it'll create an entry into the Windows XP bootloader. So I've installed it and set it all up. Now I've got my driver CD just there. But what I'm going to do first before I do anything is I am Sorry, I'm just going to focus a bit better. I'm going to fix up the bootloader. Now, I thought I would have had to change the boot order in the BIOS, but it looks like it's actually the, the installer actually um, has it written to, I think it's actually written to the Windows 98 drive and made the changes there, but Nonetheless, it comes up. I just need to change a few things in it first. Now, if you've never done this before, 
it's pretty easy. You just go, you right click on my computer, you go properties, and you go over here to advanced. And then you go all the way down here to startup and recovery. And we agree with this guy here. You can change the timeout. I'm going to leave it to 30. And here is where we've got our, it's called a boot INI, or dot INI. Uh, it's basically a little file which just gives options and stuff. It uh, tells the bootloader where to look. And currently it's just set for, yeah, it's set for both operating systems. What I want to change, a bit closer there. Is this one here? Just as Microsoft Windows, it didn't actually. That's this is the default name, and see, it's looking at partition C. And because I've got Windows 98 as the master drive, that is actually considered drive C. And because it's DOS based, it doesn't like booting off anything other than C. Um, as far as the hard drive goes, so what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to go here, and I'm just going to add a bit extra to the end. Here we go, Windows 98 SE. Oh, what have I done? Press something. Ah, I see what I've done. Had an unlock off. So, Windows 98 SE. It's all good. Now I'm just going to go save. And I can change the, the default either from Windows 98 up here. I can change it either from Windows 98 or Windows XP Professional. I'm just going to leave it at XP Pro because I think I'll probably end up using that more. Just go save. Then go up in the corner. Go that. Okay, I know it's out of focus, but... So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to test it. Let's take that drive to CD out. Uh, I'll leave it in. I'm going to go down here and just to check it. Let's go restart. Okay, there we go. So now the bootloader is all set up. And just to test it, I'll just go 98. Here I am in the driver CD I made. I just downloaded all the drivers and put them on the sales CD. Now, first up, what I want to do is what I like when I install drivers. What I like to do first is install the uh, chipset drivers and work my way up. So lower level stuff so you start off with your chipset and then I'd go SATA if I want it now these two SATA things here I don't I'm, I won't use them they're just for RAID so I'll go uh, chipset then I go LAN then I'll go audio then I'll go video and then last up hold to the modem so this does have a modem in it but I don't know if I use it so Pretty easy. Yeah, so this will take a little while, so I'm just gonna stop the video here and once it's all set up, I'll start recording again. Okay, so I've installed the drivers and everything, and it's working. Hooray! But what I'll do, I'll just show you, show you guys um, what it's like. So there's, sorry, I think there's Windows XP. What I'm going to do is just shut down, and I will show you. what it looks like. 
that's all good painting four I've also just tidied up this little bootloader a bit see second edition XP so cool okay so I just decided that I'll just throw this all in one video because it's not going to be that long um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish up do the finishing touches on the case and I'm also going to throw in some LEDs I've got a few rolls of this stuff they're just SMD LED rolls, they're 12 volts and I was thinking of where I could get the power from from it and I can, I can just pull it straight off the power supply normally what I would use would I, I would use just the standard 4 pin Molex connectors that go on the hard drive but just so I can make the case nice and neat I was looking at the other motherboard, it's down on the floor at the moment in the case but I'm actually going to pull this one off because this old board's useless now and it's buggered anyway and because the P4 connector um, for the CPU which this one doesn't really the processor isn't pulling very much power anyway so it, I don't think it's even pulling any power from here at all well, I could be wrong but um, these LEDs don't take much power either and because it's up the top of the board on the other board the one I'm actually using it'll make the wiring a lot neater so I'm going to desolder this connector and then I've got a P4 wiring loom which I pulled off the old power supply and I'm just going to make pretty much just an extension lead P4 extension so I'm going to get onto that and I'll be back in a sec okay so I finished the connector and here it is basically it's just a P4 extension cable and I've just tapped two extra wires up to 12 volt and they're going to be going up to a switch well the positive this yellow one will be going up to a switch and then into my LEDs so I'm going to wire all that in and stick the LEDs in and I'll be back in a few minutes or seconds or whenever okay so I've been thinking about what I can use for a switch and I've come up with this it's just an old uh, PCI bracket for VGA card um, wasn't quite wide enough to fit this uh, switch in so I put one screw there and then to hold the other side down I've just soldered it on like that so this is going to go in one of the empty PCI bays and um, yeah so it's nice and neat and flush and we'll be able to turn the lights on or off okay so it's um, about halfway done now I've just finished all the wiring and routing it all around and stuff so here is where the switch is in the back and there's my modem just there um, and I've routed all the wires got one wire running back along through a piece of channeling that runs along the back here for the other side and it just comes out there like that and got another wire which runs up the back of the motherboard and pops up just there I tried to run it um, around the power supply but there wasn't quite enough room that the power supply wouldn't go back in properly and that's just going to come here so I'm going to have two LED strips uh, don't have any LEDs there'll be but probably more than enough up each side like this vertically normally when I put LEDs in a case I'll do them horizontally horizontally like this parallel to each other but um, I thought because I'm trying to make the wiring and everything in this as neat as possible I might try doing it vertical this time and see how it looks so there's the wiring and see what it looks like from the back there's the switch there so you just flick it like that uh, that's off, that's on, like that so it's nice and neat okay so I've got the lights all put in uh, here they are there 
they're self adhesive so they'll just stick there by themselves whoa turn you on your side and there's that one there and this is what the finished wiring will look like. I'll tidy it up a little bit more. And this is what it'll look like when it's on. Granted, there's a light behind it, so might take away from that. It's not super bright, but sort of just a little highlight to it. I'll just turn down my exposure a bit. So oh, that was very nice. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Um, I'll do an overview of it in the next little while when I'm fully finished with it. Um, but this is just sort of like just a build lock and a uh, build log. So if you like the video, please thumbs it up, uh, rate, comment, and subscribe, please. It really helps me out. And until next time, I'll I'll be doing something, and I'll probably record it. I don't know. Anyway, see ya.